When it comes to flagship luxury sedans, it doesn't get much better than a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. This is a nameplate that's been in America for nearly 50 years, and the S-Class is special because it not only has been the benchmark in the segment, it's consistently been the best seller, and in the industry, it has among the highest owner loyalty and owner satisfaction scores. So clearly, a new version is a pretty big deal, and to test out this all-new model, I'm out here in Westerly, Rhode Island at the beautiful Ocean House with the all-new 2021 Mercedes-Benz S-Class. As you can see from the design, it still has an elegant, stately look, but Mercedes has thrown virtually everything at this car. It's got more power, it's got more technology, it's got more space, it's got more luxury, it's got more efficiency even. This car basically is supposed to do it all in the full-size luxury sedan space. So if you guys are in the market for this vehicle, how has Mercedes-Benz improved the all-new S-Class this year? Stay tuned to find out. Now, when you're spending this much money on opulent luxury, buyers demand choices, and the Mercedes-Benz S-Class has always delivered. Let's first start, of course, with what's going on underneath the hood of this all-new W223 7th generation model. The base version in the US will be the S500. That has a three liter turbocharged inline six with their EQ boost system. It actually also has an electric supercharger, so it's kind of twin charge. That motor makes 429 horsepower. It's gonna be enough power for most people. However, this is the motor that Mercedes expects to be the volume seller here in America. This is the S580. It pairs up a four liter twin turbocharged V8. This is essentially a cousin of the motor that we find in the old S63. It's the four liter bi turbo unit. It's got their new EQ boost technology, which means it's augmented by an electric starter motor that generates 21 horsepower and 184 horsepower on its or pound, pound feet of torque on its own. Combined output is 496 horsepower, so basically 500 and 516 pound feet of torque. That's an increase of around 33 horsepower over the previous S560. And if you guys are looking at the S500 compared to the S450, that makes an extra almost 70 horsepower versus the old three liter twin turbo V6. Now the base engine in inline six. Now later on, Mercedes says the plug-in hybrid version should be coming to America. They have not confirmed that. The plug-in hybrid will be called the S580E. It'll marry up the three liter inline six turbo with a uh, electric motor and a 28 kilowatt hour battery pack that delivers around 60 miles of electric only range. That's the one that I'm really curious about. And there also will be AMG versions. They haven't announced anything yet, but the rumor, the rumor mill is suggesting an S63 and an S73. Now this one here is paired up, of course, with a nine speed automatic transmission. Formatic all wheel drive is now standard across the board. So there's no rear wheel drive version of the S-Class, at least here in America. Uh, and fuel economy is actually not too bad. This one here with the V8 is rated at seven 17 in the city, 25 on the highway. You better make sure to put premium gas in this car. And as this one sits, they actually managed to reduce the weight a little bit, but it's still a porker at around 4,725 pounds. Now, when it comes to the exterior design of the new S-Class, this is an area where a lot of consumers in this segment in particular are looking for something that delivers a very stately, but also understated and elegant look. And for this all new version, you can see Mercedes has grafted on their latest design language that we first saw on the A-Class, the CLA, uh, the new C-Class, of course. The front end has a very understated look. This particular one has the uh, elegance package to it. So it's the more luxury oriented model. You have this signature Mercedes-Benz hood ornament with the three-pointed star. This is now only on the S-Class. You can't get this on any other Mercedes-Benz model. You can really uh, see that star kind of uh, looking right back at you when you're behind the wheel from the driver's seat. It really give, makes you feel like you're driving a special car. I also like the new grille. The grille is slightly larger versus the old one. This is the traditional luxury style grille. There's also gonna be an AMG line uh, that will give you more of the AMG style grille. This is definitely for more of the traditional buyers. These full multi-beam LED headlights are gonna be standard. Uh, upgraded um, models will have adaptive swiveling headlights with automatic high beams. Mercedes offers kind of like a laser light headlight in other markets, but that has not been approved, of course, for the US. And then down here you can see uh, the luxury oriented model has a lot more chrome. I'm expecting the AMG package models will have kind of blacked out accents, but this is a very elegant look painted it, well, or paired up with this blue, dark blue color. It definitely gives the new S-Class a nice appearance. I didn't like the way this looked um, in pictures when I first saw it, but seeing it out here in person, especially with this gorgeous scenery in the background, really makes this car look mighty impressive. Now, in terms of the overall length, all S-Classes in America will be the long wheelbase model, which means the long wheelbase model stretches at around 208.6 inches long. It's around 1.3 inches longer overall than the old one. Its wheelbase has been stretched by two inches to around 126.9 inches long, and it's wider. This new version is around two inches wider at around 76.8 inches long. This is about 
the same size as a Lincoln Navigator. So this is a big vehicle and you can really tell from this angle. The crazy thing is, is if you want something that's even bigger, there's an extended length version of this called the Mercedes Maybach S580. And that one will also offer a V12. The Maybach version of this car is around eight inches longer. And this one here is already pretty darn big. Now, in terms of the wheels, Mercedes is gonna offer a choice between either a 19, 20 or 21 inch wheel. My tester here has the optional 20 inch Y-spoke uh, multi-spoke wheels, uh, which are around $1,000 extra. They're wrapped in 255 wide tires. You also have the company's Airmatic air suspension that's included on this model. There's also gonna be the uh, e-active body suspension, uh, which they first introduced on the new GLE SUV a couple years ago. Now, the one thing that's really cool about the new S-Class is the fact that they've added four-wheel steering to this car. The four-wheel steering system allows the rear wheels on this particular model to turn around 10 degrees, which allows the rear wheels to turn opposite direction of the front, which gives this vehicle a turning radius that matches that of the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, around a 33-foot turning radius. If you guys go for the fatter AMG models, the wheels will be staggered in the rear, which, in the rear, which will allow the wheels to only turn a maximum of uh, four degrees. So this is a really interesting feature. It makes the new S-Class a much more maneuverable, maneuverable vehicle. Now, the other thing that they introduced with the air suspension, this vehicle has the ability to, Mercedes says, sense if there's a car that's coming to basically hit you on the side. And when it senses that, the air suspension will automatically raise the vehicle around 3.2 inches. And it does that because Mercedes says they want all the crash energy to be absorbed in the rocker panel, since that's the stronger area. Mercedes has always been good about introducing new luxury, safety, and tech features especially on the flagship new S-Class. So it doesn't surprise me at all that there are stunning new features on this vehicle that really can make it feel a little overwhelming if you guys aren't particularly used to a car with this much technology and luxury. Now, looking at the rear, I see a lot of the new CLA class and CLS class in the back. In fact, the rear taillights look very similar to that. You have this massive chrome strip, of course, that goes the almost the entire rear trunk lid area. The tailgates are, or the tail lights are full LED. Uh, you do not have sequential ID turn signals. You find that on some competitors. I would like to see Mercedes start to do that, but you can see here there's an S580 badge, formatic badge, and then down here you can see the exhaust system. It's just a trim piece. Their actual mufflers are behind the actual uh, trim piece of the exhaust, but at least it doesn't look terribly fake the way Audi does it or some other Mercedes-Benz models. There's some nicely integrated parking sensors and the trunk you can see is obviously power operated and we've got our luggage in this vehicle. I had trouble finding the actual official specs of the trunk capacity. Mercedes says it's larger this year. Uh, some of the numbers that I saw the most were around 19 cubic feet. They're saying it's around an, an inch larger versus the previous generation. But as you can see, the subwoofer takes up a lot of space back here and the seats do not fold down. They only have like a little pass through over there. Uh, but overall, the trunk capacity is decent. But remember, there's a reason why SUV sales are taking off while sedan sales have really been starting to taper down. So finally, moving on to the interior of the new S-Class, the first thing I wanna talk about are the new door handles. As you can see, they pop out very similar to what you find on something like a Tesla Model S or some Lexus and Jaguar models do that. Uh, when you lock the car, you can see the door handles hide, but as I approach the vehicle, the door handles also uh, come out and they reveal themselves, which again, works pretty well. Mercedes says they've tested these door handles thoroughly to ensure they work uh, well in colder climates. Uh, I also wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see it's a newer key fob system, although it only has three buttons on it. So I'm guessing if you guys wanna activate the remote start, you have to use the Mercedes-Benz app. But opening the door, you can see my tester with the blue exterior has this beautiful brown leather interior. It's like a upgraded Napa leather interior. The interior itself is very befitting of a luxury flagship sedan from Germany. You can see these pillars pillows in the actual headrests are on the front and on the rear headrest. It really makes this interior look opulent. And that's kind of what an S-Class has always been. It's always, always been about over the top luxury in terms of design and in, in terms of just coddling you uh, when you get into this vehicle. Now, stepping inside, let's show you guys this interior. I wanna first shut the door. This does have soft closed doors, but the doors have a nice solid sounding thunk and everything in here looks and even smells expensive. Now the start stop button is right here on the dashboard. When you turn the vehicle on, you can hear, it doesn't have a traditional starter noise because this of the, of the EQ boost system. The EQ boost system basically deletes the standard starter um, so you don't have to you know, hear the traditional startup noise. Now, um, in terms of the technology in this vehicle, let's talk about some of those features. You can see you've got twin massive LCDs here. You've got a 12 inch display right here. 
uh, for the instrument panel, and you've got a 12.8 inch screen here for their MBUX infotainment system. This is now in its second generation. This is the first new MBUX2 that we're seeing in the Mercedes-Benz product, and this screen you can see has been changed. The old S-Class had two 12 inch screens that were a massive landscape design. Now we've got a portrait design here. It's like a waterfall uh, setup and uh, the screen measures 12.8 inches. It is an OLED screen. So this is beautiful graphics, uh, really high resolution, and it's got a slightly tweaked interface, and it also includes features like over-the-air updates and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So of course, that's all included. Now, being the flagship of the S-Class line, I wanna talk about some of the materials. You can see the door panel has leather stitching right here, quilted leather right here on the door panels, leather right here, nice piano black lacquered plastic material or plastic trim. The down here area is even quilted in leather. It's soft touch, which is really nice. A lot of metal accents for the buttons for the rear window, um, controlling the rear window shade. The one thing that's interesting about this car, first of all, the door handles, you can see, are pretty cool because the door lock switch is actually integrated into the design of the handles. But the one thing I don't like are all of these touch sensitive buttons that Mercedes has added. You can see the seat control here. If you touch the seat control, it doesn't actually physically move anymore. You just apply steady pressure to it in either two force levels and it'll actually move the seat forward and back based on how hard you're pushing this by force. I'm not entirely sure I'm a fan of this. It's taking some getting used to uh, and that's something that again, I think that owners will probably get used to at some point, uh, but you can see the seats, they adjust in like 20 different ways. It even has a thigh extender here and the headrests, you can push it up and down. It's power electrically, uh, which is nice. And you also have, like I said here, heated and cooled seats, but I don't like how this panel is now a touch panel. The old S-Class had these very satisfying tactile metal buttons, and now they've replaced it with these touch sensitive panels, which is gonna take some getting used to. Another cool, interesting feature, uh, the headlight control is on the actual door panel. I love these, you know, piano black accents uh, trim. They actually kind of resist fingerprints, which is nice. My tester has the upgraded Burmester 30 speaker sound system, which these tweeters actually pop out. They rotate and all the ambient lighting in here looks really phenomenal. Uh, the one thing that's also really cool about this car is everything in here is metal. You can see metal trim, real leather, piano black plastic. You can also get real wood if you'd like. Um, the area down here is all leather stitch, leather stitch, you have plush carpeting. So there's nothing really that feels cheap for me. Um, there are a couple of sharp edges, however, that I'm noticing on the back portions of this. So if you guys constantly like keep your hand here, you might scratch this. At least I had a couple of colleagues of mine mention that. So that could be something that Mercedes could improve. This right here, you can see the piano black plastic really does a good job of kind of resisting fingerprints, which I like. Open this up, you can see your wireless phone chargers over there. You got two cup holders, although the cup holders are not heated or cooled. I've seen that on other models. Surprise it's not here. You have two USB uh, C charging ports right there, uh, which is nice. The center console here you can see is nice and padded and leather stitch if you open this up it's actually a surprisingly narrow panel or a storage bin i expected that to be a little bit uh, deeper which would have been nice the seats you can see uh, adjust in so many ways this little pillow here you can actually remove if you don't like it or you can also kind of pull it up or down depending on how comfortable you'd like it these seats i drove this car on like a four hour road trip are just incredible they are really really soft supportive and i love the massage feature now let's go ahead and get into the infotainment system here uh, for this vehicle because the infotainment system uh, like i said earlier is an updated version of mbux you can see it has things like apple carplay let me go ahead and start up the apple carplay you can see it takes up basically the entire screen which is nice there's what it looks like with all the icons amazingly crystal clear, clear graphics it's very snappy and easy to use however i did notice that there is a little bit of a learning curve here i mean a lot of the icons are you know, right there logically laid out, but sometimes you have to go through all these different buckets to get to features. Like for example, go into the settings, you can see you can adjust your driver assistance, the vehicle system, the light, interior lighting, um, the ambient lighting. You can see there's so many different ways you can customize the ambient lighting. You can see they have different themes. This one here is kind of like a Miami Rose or Miami Vice. You can see it, it even changes the color. You can see it as I go through the different colors. Uh, this vehicle, I'm sure, looks incredible at night, so I'll be looking forward to seeing how this thing uh, looks when I actually drive it at night. I won't be doing that in this video, however. Going back to the home screen here, you can see uh, the GPS display. Take a look at those graphics. You can even see the water, how detailed it looks, um, and it's also very, very snappy and responsive. This is very much similar to, I guess, Audi's Google Earth, although it's not the same thing. Um, but other than that, Mercedes has really been improving things here and there. Uh, and I also like how when you have the GPS up, it'll actually put 
a lot of what you see in here in the actual augmented reality uh, head-up display, which displays a lot of useful information and actually makes the windshield almost feel like a giant screen. And that I think is uh, a feature that a lot of owners are going to really appreciate uh, when they get used to something like that. Now, the steering wheel, as you can see here, is a power tilt and telescoping. You've got the transmission stock right here. You've got your windshield wiper stocks. You have all these touch sensitive buttons, which again are kind of annoying. The one thing that I wish they had kept, they got rid of a lot of the hard buttons. So you used to have this really satisfying knob to turn the volume up and down. Now you have this little slider touch wheel or slider touch area, which is annoying. And you also have the same thing on the steering wheel. You have to get used to it and you can also control it from the steering wheel controls here if you don't want to use the touch screen. As you can see, the touch screen does show fingerprints annoyingly. Now, one thing you're probably can't, you probably can't see very well on camera is this 3D instrument panel. I can turn off the 3D effect by just tapping that right there. Um, and you can see the screen gets a little bit brighter, but when you tap the 3D effect right there, you can't really see it on camera, but it makes it look like the gauges are kind of popping out at you. It looks pretty cool. It looks amazing, of course, with the augmented reality heads up display and the augmented reality uh, GPS function. Um, the steering wheel itself, you can see it's the same one that we saw on the new uh, E-Class. It's got leather stitching on the actual airbag cover, uh, which is nice. A lot of piano black accents here, which do collect fingerprints and smudges. So that's something to, to keep in mind. This is the luxury oriented wheel. There could be a different steering wheel for the uh, AMG models. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see here is the full top down 360 camera. Mercedes has always done a really good job with uh, the actual graphics and resolution. Uh, you also have automatic parallel parking, which is nice. Um, the Resolution, like I said, uh, is amazing. And you also have this really interesting graphical representation when it's trying to look for parking spaces. And because this is MBUX, it also has their you know assistant where you can say, hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Turn on my driver's side massage. I'm switching on the massage on the driver's seat. <laughs> and that actually works pretty well, although surprisingly, she didn't actually come up when I said it the first time. If you want to access the massage seat, you go over here, and you can see there's new levels of massage like deep wave, deep workout. It all works very seamlessly. It's among the best in the industry. So nothing really to complain about there. There's just a really big learning curve. Uh, like I said, that'll take a little bit of time to kind of get used to that. The other thing I love about this car, going to the climate menu here, you can see there is an air quality um, feature here where there's an ionizer and there's a perfume that it wafts into this cabin that makes it smell incredible. It smells like basically your favorite high-end department store in here and it just makes it feel like the outside has just filled with dirty air. It's just a really nice place to uh, spend time. I could probably do a separate video on this entire infotainment system but that would probably make this video really long so um, I'm gonna wait until I have the car for a full week to show you guys a little bit more features with this. The drive mode selector before I end this you can see is right here. It's now this little button you can see there's an efficiency, comfort, sport, sport plus, and individual setting. The graphics all look really incredible. The interior feels really roomy. That three-pointed star over there reminds you that you're driving a special car. But other than that, this interior definitely is overwhelming with luxury and tech and room. And it's gonna take a little bit of time to get used to all of the features in this car, but I would expect nothing less from a flagship Mercedes-Benz vehicle. So typically when I start the driving portion, I'm actually in the driver's seat, but I figured because this is a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, I wanted to be an S-Class owner and simply just be driven in the car. And this is a great opportunity to also show you guys all the features back here. As you guys can see, I've got my editor who is uh, my chauffeur today, my own personal chauffeur. Rob, how do we make this traffic go away? Murder a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad this car doesn't fly. So Mercedes, if you are you know considering making this car fly to avoid the traffic, that would be great. But um, I do want to talk about all the features in the back seat um, before we go into the actual driving position where I'm actually driving because this car has about $10,000 worth of options back here. And it's split up between three different option packages, a rear seat package for 3,500 bucks, an executive rear seat package for $3,150 that gives me the massaging seats and the heated and cool seats and like a heated neck warmer and shoulder warmer and such. And then a rear seat entertainment package that throws in these MBUX screens back here there are a total of three screens back here in general the car has a total of five or six screens i guess six if you add in the augmented reality display the back seat is obviously where a lot of s-class owners are going to spend a lot of time especially if you have this kind of money um, to hire a chauffeur now speaking of which in terms of legroom mercedes did make this car longer so now we have around 43 inches of legroom back here all s-class models will have the long wheelbase if you guys want more rear seat legroom, the Maybach version is eight inches longer than this one, which is already about the same length as a Lincoln Navigator, as I mentioned um, earlier. But 43 inches of legroom is great. 
from this angle, it probably doesn't look like much, but on this side that I'm sitting in, this is the magic seat, because if I push this button here, it makes the front passenger seat move out of the way. And I'm guessing there's a weight sensor in there to keep it from you know, crushing somebody who's sitting in that seat, but right now there's nobody there. And then I can basically push this button right here. Now I mentioned buttons, but this is actually a touch sensitive panel here. And there's a little button here that shows kind of like an ottoman. If you push that button, the seat will kind of just automatically start to recline after it moves that seat forward. This particular seat also has an ottoman and a footrest kind of built in, which is really nice. Um, these touch sensitive controls, I didn't like them in the front seat and I also don't like them uh, in the back seat here. Uh, Mercedes says it just takes a little bit getting use, used to. There are two different speeds with these touch sensitive controls, but as you can see, as I push this button here, <laughs> my five foot seven frame clearly does not have enough room back here to really stretch out. So this is probably a reason why you'd want to get the Maybach version. Uh, but I mean, this is as soft as your living room. Uh, your favorite chair in your living room because the leather back here is just so supple and so soft and it's just you could easily fall asleep back here you know granted you don't have too long a legs this is a little bit cramped for me so i'm gonna actually put the seat back down because i do want to talk about the tech now the tech back here is pretty overwhelming if you guys are not used to what mercedes offers let's wait for this seat to come back And as my chauffeur puts the hammer down on that four liter twin turbo V8, we have almost 500 horsepower, which is nice. I can't wait to show you guys how that drives. Um, <laughs> I'm having to censor myself so much with my cursing because I don't want to curse in the video. <laughs> You're gonna have fun editing this one, okay. <laughs> Now, typical with a back seat in this segment, you have a lot of um, privacy shades. So I've got a power shade here. I have a power shade on that side. I also have a power shade on the sunroof back here and of course on the rear window shade. It's all controlled via the um, controls on the actual door panel. Um, I can actually control the other side as well in addition to my own side and it's all power operated. Uh, and you can see the back control or the sunroof control is right here. And then this back control is from uh, this little button here on the side as well. It all is very nice of course, because it gives you nice protection from the shade and maybe even the paparazzi. Now, let's talk a little about the tech back here because for 3,500 bucks, you get these two screens, which the screens themselves are practically identical in um, clarity as the OLED screen that's in the front. And as you can see, this is too far for me to reach. Um, so if I wanted to reach the screen, Mercedes gives me a nice little solution here. I basically pull out this little handy dandy tablet right here, which has its own little mounting place there and it's, um, it actually will charge when it's mounted. And then I just kind of go here and click right rear, and that'll actually allow me to connect wirelessly or remotely to this tablet over here that's right in front of me, which is really cool because as you can see, this is a little bit too far, I can't reach that. But you guys can't really see that from the camera angle, so I'm gonna switch over to the left tablet here because as you can see, as I control and swipe here, it is controlling the left side of the tablet or the right side, which is all great. You can access features like the GPS that's, that uh, Rob is using in the front. You can access the phone, which clearly it actually blocks out no access because it's only supposed to be for the driver. I can control the radio settings here. I can control the mu media. And then I can also access my comfort controls back here. Um, as you can see, we've got massaging seats back here. That's part of the $3,200 executive rear seat package. So I can hit that and click activating massage. and while I'm sitting here getting the same massage that the two front seats have, and I also have heated and cooled seats, like I said, I can also adjust the ambient lighting back here, which the multiple colors is all really great. You have these different modes, such as Miami Rose, which kind of looks like Miami Vice. I'd love to see the way that looks like at night. The ambient lighting in here, like I said earlier, is interactive. So um, it will interact with the vehicle and give you warning signs. For example, if you try to signal the uh, on the left side and there's a car there, the car's entire left side will flash red to let you know that there is an oncoming vehicle and you shouldn't actually try to get into the um, oncoming lane. But all of this is really cool at night. It makes the S-Class's cabin feel very high-end in here. Uh, Mercedes is typically very good with that. And the entire interface here for this is for MBUX, this is the second generation MBUX, is all fairly easy to use. There's still a pretty high learning curve in here, but you know this level of customization makes the back seat you know, where you wanna spend all of your time. The center console here actually has a wireless phone charger. This wireless phone charger here, as you can see, uh, is part of the rear seat package. It's the first time I've seen a wireless phone charger in the second row. Um, 
and there's a little bit more storage over here. The one thing it is missing is a refrigerator. There's no refrigerator or champagne flutes. I'm expecting Mercedes to be uh, reserving that for the Maybach version, which I should be able to drive hopefully by the end of this year. But other than that, you know, these packages add up to an expensive $10,000, but uh, this is really the way you're gonna wanna go if you plan to have a chauffeur drive you around most of the time. But Rob, I'm tired of sitting back here. We should probably switch because I think people want to see me drive the car now. <laughs> How long is your merger? I don't know, but I'm just going to floor it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I have put Rob in the back seat so I can play chauffeur. And we are finally behind the wheel of the new S580, the V8 model. <laughs> yeah, so Mercedes says you can get to 60 in 4.4 seconds with this car, which is around a half a second faster than the S500, which has the inline six. They only have the V8s here for us to drive. And they say that this is going to be the volume engine, and I believe them. This is the engine that you expect from an S-Class. It's got the V8 smoothness. It has a nice noise, yet it also stays incredibly quiet in here. Um, so quiet that there were times where I was in the back seat and Rob had this thing revving up to like 5,000 RPM and I didn't even realize it until I looked at the tack. Uh, this has always represented the kind of the pinnacle of luxury, especially German luxury. And, you know, Mercedes sets the benchmark here and this is a pretty high benchmark to start with. Uh, I mean, the silky smooth inline six, I love that motor in like the E53. So I have no doubt that it'll also be good in this car. My real um, curious thing that I want to drive, however, is the new S580e, the plug-in hybrid version, which combines the inline six with a 28 kilowatt hour electric or, or battery pack and 160 horsepower electric motor, making around 500 horsepower, 60 miles of electric range. That's the one that I want to drive. But this V8 is probably, you know, the best representation for now of the new S-Class. Keep in mind, there's also an AMG model coming. Now, we are about 20 minutes away from the hotel right now. Uh, so I thought I'd show you guys a quick little highway clip. This car does have the full driver assistance tech. It's essentially level two, but still a hands-on system. Um, Mercedes says a level three will be, or it is equipped to handle a level three full autonomous system where it's hands-free, um, but not quite yet available here in America. Essentially, um, this vehicle, when I set the adaptive cruise, will keep in the lane. It'll change lanes for me. The active or the uh, head-up display with its augmented reality shows this interesting green line that shows exactly the car in front of you um, and the distance it is, and it kind of follows the road. It, it projects the information probably 30 feet ahead of you on the windshield, which kind of imitates like a very large screen. Like it's almost like the entire windshield is a massive screen. So it's a really cool feature that I think is a, probably a game changer. I haven't seen this yet uh, in the industry. So I think that Mercedes has done a really good job with the tech, especially on the highway, that this thing is so quiet, it's so smooth. Even in Sport Plus right now, it rides so well. It kind of just shocks me. Uh, with the 20 inch wheels in these air mat the airmatic suspension how comfortable the ride is and the transmission this car this is the nine speed uh, mercedes transmission it's a mercedes developed transmission and it shifts really well yeah so in terms of the power i don't really have any complaints with this car i think the v8 is definitely the motor that you want to go for now um, but for those of you who want to save some cash on the hood this the six cylinder i haven't driven yet should also be a very enticing option but just cruising down the road here you know, the seats are comfortable. I'm, I'm sitting here getting a massage. This pillow on this seat headrest, I like it. Although um, Rob was telling me that he didn't like the pillow. He thought it was kind of getting in the way. You can remove this pillow if you don't like it. Um, but you know, the visibility in here is also pretty good. All the driver assistance, most of it comes standard. Uh, that three pointed star that sits there at the hood is a classic S-Class design you know, feel, uh, signature. This car just makes you feel like you've made it. It makes you feel like you're rich, basically. Um, and that's exactly why so many buyers are so loyal to the S-Class. Because it's near perfect. I mean, there's very little things that I can complain about this car other than just nitpicking the details. 
I mean, yes, this car is overly complicated at times. I mean, we got off of the airplane in Newark and then they basically threw us into this car. We had to drive through New York City, which took us almost two hours to get out of the city. And I was tr fiddling around with the screen here and all the settings and it was a little overwhelming at first. I would need more time, which when I have, a ve when I have this vehicle for a full week, I'll do zero to 60 testing. I'll do a fuel economy test. I'll see what it's like to live with the tech once I've actually spent some time getting used to it. But my initial impressions are very, very impressive. And for also for such a big car, this thing handles extremely well. Uh, the four wheel steering, you can really feel it when you're making tight turns. On the open road like this, you know, as I chuck it into this, you know, slight curve here, the car just drives a lot smaller than it is. I mean, it obviously still feels big and heavy. It, it feels like a very expensive car. Um, but really, I'll be curious to know, you know, how the AMG models drive. Uh, this one is the executive line and it's tuned a lot more for comfort, which is what the average typical S-Class buyer is going to look for. I did want to make a note that uh, in terms of the drive mode, when I have it in Sport Plus, the transmission is bang on responsive. In comfort, it does lag a little bit at times because it's trying to eke out the best fuel economy. Um, so clearly, you know, that's a tuning thing. I would definitely, you know, drive this in Sport, Sport Plus. You can drive this in Sport Plus. Uh, and it, you know, drives incredibly well. It's not too harsh. Just floored it from a stop there. And <laughs> wow, this thing has so much power. Like it does not feel like a near 5,000 pound sedan going down the road. It just accelerates with such effortlessness. It's so smooth. So yeah, ultimate road trip vehicle, yes. Not the best city car because of how big it is, but that you know four-wheel steering helps. So much tech and luxury, you'll be spending days with the owner's manual reading all about it and just trying to figure out how, how it all works. Uh, but really, I mean, the back seat is amazing. Driving the car is also not bad, but uh, Mercedes has definitely raised the bar here with this new S-Class. So I started this S-Class drive in Newark, New Jersey, where I first flew in early this morning. And then Mercedes had us get into this car and drive around four hours to Ocean House here in Westerly, Rhode Island. And this was a really great opportunity, of course, to test out the S-Class's highway distance traveling. I mean, the massaging seats were great. The interior is super quiet. The tech in this vehicle is very overwhelming. I really need to spend a little bit more time to kind of feel how this thing works and, and use it in the actual real world in my daily life because this car is jam packed full of tech. I mean, an overwhelming amount of tech from the augmented reality head up display, the same thing on the GPS system, the twin turbocharged V8 with all that power it has, the air suspension. I mean, this car also has an amazing ambient lighting system that I really need to see at night because it's interactive. As you guys saw earlier, uh, every time you, know, you just change a setting or increase even something like the temperature in the interior, it changes color. So this is a very detailed car. You can see Mercedes really sweated the details and it's gonna show up in the car and making it feel special and also show up in the price tag because this new version is a lot more expensive versus the old model. The old one you could actually get for just under $100,000. This new version is around $15,000 more expensive at a base price of around $110,000 for the base 500. Remember, however, you get a lot more luxury and tech and you get more horsepower and standard all wheel drive. So you are getting something for your money. If you guys want the V8 version, the V8 is around $118,000 around $9,000 more than the previous generation, which was called the S560. Now my test drive here, of course, is not a base model. It has a plethora of options on it to bring the as total price to around $147,800, nearly 150 grand. And this isn't even an AMG model, which makes this pretty darn expensive, even by S-Class standards. However, as you guys saw from the performance, the technology, the luxury, the prestige, just the presence this car has, it's gonna continue to be a popular choice among wealthy individuals who can afford this car. And really, I have very little complaints with this thing other than the fact that I wanna spend a little more time with it and I cannot wait to see the AMG versions of this car, which will make it even quicker. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2021 Mercedes-Benz S-Class. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.